Right, so when we talk about charging and discharging of capacitors, we also notice that there's work done. For example, when we charge a capacitor, work is done by the power supply. Power supply. To move the charges onto the capacitor, right? And this energy is transferred from power supply and is stored as the electrical potential energy, right, short form, lah. electrical potential energy in the capacitor. So whenever we, okay, if we go back to our drawing in our, in page one in our notes, we will notice that whenever we move a charge, there is potential difference. See? So you're moving a charge across a potential difference based on your understanding so far. Hopefully you think that, oh yeah, there is some work done that translates to energy stored inside the parallel plate. So we're going to try to write that down. It's a bit like conservation of energy. <clears throat> All right. So the electric potential energy supplied by the power supply, which will be equal to the energy stored in the capacitor. Now, this is perfect energy conversion. Now, no heat loss, nothing. Perfect. Okay. So here to find electric potential energy, I hope you still remember that it is Q. I mean, your QV, QV, Q delta V, it exists in many, many forms now, okay? So whenever you see something like this, right, you should actually know that it has roots. Whenever we look at, we take something and we multiply by the change in something, it has roots in area one. Think about all the times we talk about area under the graph representing energy, okay? So here, if you look at this, this is actually equivalent to the area under... QV graph. Okay, so I'm going to draw a QV graph for you right now. Alright, so you see here, I have already drawn the QV graph uh, for this capacitor. Okay, just a brief reminder in case you need it. Um, the charge here is the charge stored on one single plate of the capacitor. So this is your Q. The potential difference, let's say this is this one is E. Lah, huh? So this is the potential difference across this E which is also the same as the battery E. So if you want to find how much energy is stored inside this capacitor, let's say you disconnect or you open the switch, okay? The energy stored is actually area under this graph. Okay, one here. This will be the energy stored inside the capacitor. So we definitely cannot use this equation because your charge is not constant. Previously, when you use this equation, uh, this one charge is constant. You look at the charge, where it's constant. Okay? So actually, what we're looking for is actually integration from 0 to, let's say, E. Okay? So I'm just going to just derive the general equation. So I'll just change the symbols a bit. Okay? So let's say this one is also V. So that we have a common symbol that is... I think this is in your formula sheet. I'm not sure why this chapter got many equations in the formula sheet. But it's not a very popular chapter. Like. It's not as popular as not as popular as the electric field chapter, which they give you less equation. Maybe CIE is just such a true. Okay, so I'm going to integrate this to find the area under the graph. I think you stare at this, you already know. Like, okay, but let's say you know Q is equal to CV. Okay, and then this one you can change. Okay, I'm just going to write here, Q is equal to CV that we are substituting in. So when you integrate CV, huh, this one, you integrate v, v, your C is constant. Mm. Ma. So when you integrate, this one will be V squared over 2 from V to 0. So this will be CV squared, and this is half CV squared. I mean, minus 0, so that one will disappear. So your energy stored in the capacitor is half CV squared. I'm just going to draw a box around this. Okay. So this one is, if let's say you know the capacitance of the capacitor and the potential difference across the capacitor. But sometimes we don't. So using the equation Q is equal to CV, just like your energy dissipated as heat in your resistor, it can exist in three different forms. Let's say I substitute C is equal to Q over V inside. So I will get half... Q over V times V square, right? The V and V will cancel, so I'll get E is equal to half QV. 
Okay. So again, uh, a common mistake that students may have is that they think, oh, electric potential energy or QV or QV low. Correct. If your Q is constant, but specifically for a capacitor, it is half QV. Okay. So you might be thinking, oh, miss, the power supply gives out the energy of QV or But this capacitor only store half QV. Where did the half go? What do you think? Aha, uh -huh, it's lost. Lost where? Ah, uh, think about it. Want to blame who? Okay. <laughs> it's not half the plate, the other plate. Think about it. Where did the half go? Okay, I'm going to derive the other one first. So you got half QV. I would say that in this case, right, whenever you mobilize, uh, there's something happening here whereby it seems like something is a bit off. Okay, just go and think about this. Maybe we'll record a further physics video to address this. Okay, so let's continue. This E would be half. Okay, now we substitute. We have an equation with no Q. We have an equation with no C. Maybe we need an equation with no V. So V here will be equal to Q over C. So this will be Q, Q over C. So your E will be half Q square over C. Do you need to know all three? Not really. Lah. I would suggest just using one. And I would normally suggest the first one simply because I don't want to confuse myself with the battery. All right. But there is a past year question that asks you a little bit about the power supply and the capacitor storage. Like the capacitor store half QV, but the power supply only provides QV. Okay, so the only satisfying answer that we can say to ourselves right now is that this half QV, you supply QV, capacitor store half QV, the other half QV is lost to internal resistance of the circuit. Okay, there's actually a lot more things happening inside capacitor that is too detailed for us to uncover right now. There's some form of oscillation, there's some form of behavior. So I think right now all that co contributes towards the inefficiency. Why is it exactly half? All this is a bit later lah in your physics journey. But right now, in this uh, hopefully not too long video, we have seen that whenever we move charge onto a single plate of a capacitor, energy is stored in the capacitor, which can be calculated by area under the QB graph, okay? Q being the charge stored on one plate, and V is the potential difference across the plate. Okay. I should just write here. So for all of this, Q is charge stored on one plate, V is the potential difference across the plate, and C is the capacitance of the capacitor, okay? There are three different forms. Um, I generally think one is good enough, maybe the first one. And you just remember the definition equation of Q equal to CV. Log. Then you can just keep substituting, like I've seen here, to find different different forms. Use the equation based on the information given to you in the question. All right. So um, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.